In this video I'll be demonstrating the basics of the autopilot in the FA-18 Super Hornet default aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Compared to the likes of DCS, many of the functions are not implemented, but there's enough here to get you up and away, control the aircraft, heading and altitude, as well as being able to follow a flight plan. During the video we'll be referring to a number of displays including the center display, or sometimes called the upfront control panel, and flanking that on either side is the left and right MFD or multifunction display. Below the control panel we have our map display. For our flight today we're in the Persian Gulf. A note for the F-18 you do need to create a flight plan in the world map as there's no facility within the aircraft to do this. This is the SimHanger channel. My name's Mark. Thank you very much for watching. and Let's get started. We're on the runway, ready to go. But first, something I always forget. Below the flight stick handle is this red button here. Let's press that to unlock the steering. You'd need this for taxiing and ground control. Note this is separate to your parking brake. Let's just have a quick look at our instrument panel. This in the real world is a touch screen and we're going to press the autopilot button, the AP button. This does not engage the autopilot but reveals a sub-menu of options that are available to you. If you do this on your airborne, it will engage basic heading and pitch function. Turning our attention to the right hand MFD and pressing the lower center menu button and then selecting the HSI, the horizontal situation indicator, which is the fourth soft key on the left hand side. Our display has now changed. It's the same as our map display, but without the map. We can now view our flight plan by pressing the SEQ1 or Sequence 1 key, and our flight plan is shown as a dotted line. For those of you having used Garmin units and used to the magenta line, well, the green dotted line is exactly the same. And we have the option to zoom in and out by using the Center Soft key right at the top. Our current view is set at 40 nautical miles. Let's change that. Now 20 nautical miles, 5 and so on, indicated on the display, center top. The scale now is 160 nautical miles. You have to keep pressing the button to cycle through. We'll leave it at 20 for now. And let's just take a closer look. Notice here 0 is indicated. That's your waypoint number and it's your departure point. Waypoints are just numbered 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4 and so on. Let's just change the scale so we can get a better look. I think 80 nautical miles will do. Notice the up and down arrows on the right hand side. Pressing the up arrow, we can cycle through our waypoint. And as you can see there, there's an indicator that will point to the waypoint. Waypoint 3, now pointing to waypoint 5 and so on. We can cycle back through the waypoints by selecting the down arrow. If the waypoint is visible, depending on the scale that you're using, it'll be indicated by a small green circle as shown. Anyway, that's enough for now. Let's get up and away, and we can put the autopilot to test once we're airborne. Prior to departure, it's always a good idea to set your waypoint to waypoint 1, which is the next waypoint. We're continuing our climb and I'm now going to engage the autopilot and you'll immediately notice two actions are activated. Heading, so the aircraft will maintain the current heading and if your bank is within the two 5 degree notches it'll straighten you up. Unless you're in a bank greater than 5 degrees then it will hold the bank. The other function activated is the FPAH, Flight Path Attitude Hold. This is in effect your pitch control. Now pushing forward on my flight stick, reduce my pitch angle to something in and around 5 degrees. I've now released the stick and in effect the autopilot will hold it wherever I left it. The heading function also controls the bank angle. I'm now going to bank to the right. We need to do that anyway as we're heading away from our flight path. I'm banking at something like 12 or 13 degrees right now. Hands off the stick and the autopilot will hold this bank. And it is, to all intents and purposes, a fly-by-wire system. Here's something you may not know. Our Hornet has an auto-throttle. 
a little bit difficult to get it. It's tucked well away over here. That's the button there and press it and the auto throttle will hold you at whatever speed you were doing at the time you pressed. To disengage it you have to press the button again. There are two altitude hold options. There is R Alt or Radar Altitude. This is used if you're flying below 5000 feet and at the point it's engaged, let's say 1000 feet, it will hold you above the ground level at that 1000 feet. If the ground rises, also will your altitude to maintain that 1000 foot gap. Let's just say the implementation in the sim is variable. The other and more common one is B Alt or Barometric Altitude. When you press B Alt, whatever altitude you happen to be at, the autopilot will then level you off at that altitude. At the time that you press it, it will round it off to the nearest 100 feet. In this case, 17,000 feet. Note once I hit B Alt, the flight path angle hold is disengaged for obvious reasons. Heading is still engaged and holding our bank as we continue to turn towards our route. We can get the aircraft to follow the flight plan, the flight route, by activating the Waypoint soft key on the right hand MFD. Make sure a waypoint ahead of you is selected and sequence one is also on. We can activate this by selecting the couple waypoint on our center control panel. I've selected that and fairly violent movement but you can see that the aircraft is now turning towards waypoint one. Note it won't follow the magenta line. It will direct you from your current position to that waypoint. The couple or CPL waypoint indicator is showing on the right hand MFD and it's also showing on the HUD or heads up display. In Microsoft Flight Simulator I found sometimes it won't engage. Then hit the CPL button again. We're now going to start to descend but I'm going to leave the auto throttle on so that my speed is managed. I push my flight stick forward and note flight path attitude hold has automatically been engaged to hold the pitch whilst at the same time I remain coupled and heading directly to my next waypoint which in this case is waypoint 1. I've pushed the nose down to give me a rate of descent of something around 3000 feet per minute. My right hand MFD is indicating the necessary information. 35 nautical miles and at my current speed 6 minutes and 7 seconds until I'm overhead. The Hornet also has a traditional heading mode and this here is our heading marker. This is also shown on the map display. We can select a heading by using the switch here and the mouse wheel. And by moving it left or right we can change the heading as needed to any desired heading that we want. I'm going to select a heading just a bit to the left of our current flight path. And now if I go to my central display and select heading once again you'll see it will change to heading select and the coupled waypoint has now been disengaged and it's flying on a direct heading. I'm continuing my descent as flight path altitude hold remains active. The Super Hornet also has a ground track heading function as an alternative to heading select. In principle the difference is in ground track it draws a straight line and you fly that line. In heading select you can move off track let's say you've got a strong crosswind blowing in from the left whilst you maintain the heading your track will move to the right somewhat due to the impact of the wind. We're continuing to descend that's about low enough for now and it's time to get back on track. To level off I'm going to hit B Alt. That'll level me off at 8500 feet. Auto throttle is holding my speeds relatively constant. To turn back towards waypoint 1 I could of course just adjust my heading and fly towards the arrowhead but in this case I'm going to just recouple to the navigation systems and the autopilot should do the rest. Autopilot's picked it up and we're now turning towards the waypoint number one. Another thing worth knowing is this switch here, if it's turned on, will activate your helmet HUD or heads up display. Rotate the dial to the right to activate and then when you change your view away from the cockpit instrumentation, the basic HUD information will be displayed, including speed, altitude and so on. To turn it off again is just a simple matter of turning the dial into the off position 
and this turns off the heads-up display on your helmet. Quite a useful feature, especially if you're flying in VR. We're currently flying towards Waypoint 1, which we manually selected on the right-hand MFD. When we reach that point, if we don't manually change it to Waypoint 2, the aircraft will maintain current heading and no longer follow the flight plan. So just before you reach a waypoint, you've got to remember to change it. Alternatively, you can let the autopilot do it for you by selecting this auto button. Once selected, you'll have to recouple the waypoint and then it will automatically transition from waypoint 1 to waypoint 2 to waypoint 3 and so on. We're less than a minute away from waypoint 1, we have auto selected and it's now changed to waypoint 2 and the aircraft is turning accordingly to head towards that waypoint. Waypoint 2 is indicated on the MFD and we can see it's 28.5 nautical miles and just over 5 minutes to the next waypoint. I'll be landing at the next waypoint, it's an airport, so I'll push my nose down, flight path attitude hold is activated and I remain coupled to the waypoint. Whilst we haven't covered every aspect of the autopilot, we've covered all the main functions. And hopefully you'll find it useful in your future flights. As always to everybody, thank you very much for joining me today. Stay well, keep the blue side up, and I'll see you all again in the very near future. Oh, and Pimax Crystal Review coming up soon. Cheers for now, and take care.